Good morning, y'all. We're in Bongbyung this morning. It is a huge tourist city. You see lots of Korean, Chinese, Westerners stopping off here just to kind of come here and relax. I actually stopped off here because I'm traveling from Vientiane all the way to Long Prabang, uh, but I didn't want to make the whole journey in one trip. So I decided to stop off here and just relax for a few days, but I wanted to go ahead and go to a morning market this morning, and I wanted to bring you along with me. So I got a motorbike because it's a little further out of town. We're about to hop on and head that way. For y'all that don't know, my name's Max and my kind of eats, and you're coming along with me today. We're here in parked, walking up now. I don't know what it's gonna be like this morning. Subadi. <laughs> Like I said, I don't know what it's gonna be like this morning, but we'll see. Nothing else, the people are super friendly, so we'll get here and have some fun. <laughs> First rule of thumb, watch your head. I've about smashed my face into this tin roof like three times already. Uh, now we're making our way into the cooked food. You see a lot of smoke coming now. That's smoky, this is where the cooking is going on. I feel like this probably isn't much of a traditional food, but the lady had like almost like a little waffle iron and she was cooking these up. I was like, oh, I'd go for some uh, donut shaped little waffles this morning, start my day off. That's exactly what these are, like a little waffle batter. I can't help but feel like I need a ton of maple syrup to go along with these, a little dry without it. Bye A must for me growing up the sticky rice. So what they do is like dip it in a batter and they put it over the hot open flame. But really what got me, he's got a nice little chili oil mixture. He's spreading on a few of these. So I want to get this little spicy version a try. Wow. Mmm. Extremely hot, that sticky rice retains that heat, but when you start brushing that chili oil on there, it's really salty, you get a nice kick of spice, but it's charring up a little bit, so you get this little crunch. That reminded me more of like a hash brown more than anything. So we got the grilled eggs here, I think. I've seen these and I've seen these and I've seen these, but I've never gotten them. I don't know how to eat them or what to do here. I'm just gonna pull one off and crack it open. Oh yeah, see, it's just cooked on the inside here. Oh, and look at the smoke that started to infuse into the egg. It's actually started to turn brown, starting to look more like a soy sauce soaked egg. I'm gonna hope this is black pepper and everything. It's just not a bad egg. Look at that, it does not look great. That is a hard cooked scrambled egg with a lot of smoke flavor. That's about all there is to it. I feel like I need to eat that with something, so I may save that for like my bigger meal later. I think that would be nice to have as like an addition, another flavor profile, but by itself, it's a little one dimensional. I did not realize there was this huge open outdoor area. I may have uh, prematurely bought too much food because it looks like I got a lot more to buy. Oh, good day. Oh, yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> Got a little sample here. Mm. It just melts in your mouth from sugar. It reminds me a lot of the quay that I had in Malaysia. So I'm a believer in giving out samples. If you're trying to sell something, it worked. End up buying something. Got a sweet treat for later today.
out here is all the fruits, it's all the vegetables. Don't see much to buy that I can eat right now. So I think I'm gonna go back in, try to grab some sticky rice somewhere and start eating the things I've bought. And then, of course, get ready for that next round. Cannot pass this up, got a lady growing up fresh, pork intestines, she's sitting there basting it. Look at her baster, it looks like a bunch of banana leaves rolled up together and she just cut it until it's kind of made like the little floppy end. Now, another reason I wanted to eat here is because they actually have a table. So again, I don't have to get the plastic and B, I can have all my things kind of spread out. Okay, so I got jowl here, which is like actually a dipping sauce. I think it's like jowl bowl, something like that. <laughs> they were rattling off so many different types of dipping sauces, y'all. I think there are about a thousand types of just dipping sauces just in this market alone. There's so many. This one just intrigued me because the actual texture in it, it's really stringy, got a lot of vegetation in it. It looks a lot like mud, but it just smells. Oh, it just smells extremely spicy and like it has a lot of aromatics pounded in here. Whoa. Oh, it's sour. No, it's salty. Now it's sweet and spicy. Oh my gosh. That was a ride for sure. That took me for a ride. Start off with this sausage. Look how gorgeous this is. Look at the inside of this. I mean, that is just pure dark flavor. I see chilies. I see lots of lemongrass. I see little bits and pieces of pork fat. Now this is exciting right here. This is 100% flavor right here. It's why I cannot get enough of the sausages here because they are so complex. It's just not a fatty piece of pork that's throwing a lot of sugar in it, it's gonna melt in your mouth. This has just got that greasy coating outside. You got the pork lot on the middle, so you do get that decadency, but it's then infused with so much chili seed and lemongrass. You get the texture, you get so many aromatic flavors. I mean, check the inside of this. Look at all those ingredients. You can see the chili. You can see a ton of lemongrass. You can see some black pepper seeds. Wow, absolutely phenomenal. And that is a greasy snap crunch coating. No matter where you go, when you come to Laos, sausage, I must try. Try them all. That's gonna be my goal, to try every single sausage I can. Yeah, what she's basing in, can you say garlic bomb? Wow, that just attacked my taste buds, y'all. That is smoky, fatty pork with a ton of garlic. I will say, I wish I had a different dipping sauce. I wish I had one that was a little more sour, had a lot more like lime juice in it to really cut to that fatty pork. I think it would pair beautifully together. Super simple, but wow. I mean, that is just well grilled up pork with a sweet little soy sauce coating. And so that's when you really need your dipping sauces and things to kind of get more flavors going. That's very one dimensional. Not my favorite, but it'll do. I'm gonna give the egg round two here now that I got my dipping sauce and a little sticky rice. Mm. That's how you do it. Get those eggs, get you some sticky rice, some dipping sauce. That can make a really cheap, complete meal. Mm. I still feel like there's a lot of goodies in here, but we gotta hurry. Seems like the market's dying down. Let's get moving. Got more fried goodies here, but this is something different. What I do believe, I think this is fried sweet potato. She thinks I'm crazy, but I told her I'm just gonna pick and eat here because I didn't want to take a bag. Mm. Look how vibrant purple this is. That is for sure a decadent bite. I mean, I just got an explosion of greasiness when I bit into this. Tell you the truth, I don't care for their batter or their frying process, it's too greasy. That's chewy. That's sticky, that's chewy, that is thick, that is oh my gosh, I cannot breathe. Ooh, I took a too big of a bite of this fried up rice ball stuff of mung bean. You know, pulls the moisture out of your mouth, it's sticky, it's chewy. 
I didn't think I was gonna make it out of there alive. I mean, that is just a jaw muscle workout. Now, I'm really hoping this last one is pandan flavored. Just the only thing I can think that would have this green coloring. Not to mention, look at the surface area of crunch on this. This is a typical case of we saved the best for last. Oh yeah, that's just pandan. A little custard on the inside. Nice fried up dough ball where they're rolling it in something so it's like that extra crunchification. Thank you, I need a good one. Must not be destiny to leave yet. I was on my way out and I saw the stall here doing noodles, so I thought I'd stop being tribal. Yeah, I'm trying to smash these noodles as hard. This little homie over here, he's slurping hard. My boy. Ooh, and the noodles are here. This actually smells like a pho when it first comes out here. And it kind of looks like it too. I think this may be like a little Laotian version of a pho because I know it usually has tomatoes in it. You see all the greenery, got the nice little rice noodles. Other than that, it has a nice subtle pork flavor, nice and milky, and a big kick of garlic, it's crazy. That was garlic, it's ginger. Nope. Now one way to be a local here that I love is you gotta doctor your noodles to the way you like them. You'll see everybody touching up their noodles until they're perfect for them. Just a nice milky pork broth, fresh rice noodles. They actually have a lot of spring to them, and you doctor that up to how you like it. Me, I need a little bit of heat this morning. I haven't had much spice. Those are hitting the spot. Nice bowl. Mm. That was a really strange texture for the pork ball for me. It was really doughy. It wasn't springy at all. I guess I don't know if I've been in Thailand where it's been so bouncy, so springy. I was expecting it, but that was more of like a doughy, very soft. It had no bounce back. Pig's bug cake, soft. Not the best bowl of noodles I've ever had, but you know what? It's something cheap. It's 10,000 kip. You get in here, you get your protein, you get your veg, you get to doctor it up how you want it, and you get something in your stomach, and you get your day started. Alright y'all, here's an update. I was dirt road riding. I got a flat through a village and his family has taken me in as their own. Fix my flat right now. Number one, always have snacks. I cut the sticky rice in my coconut custard from earlier. Oh yeah, always having snacks makes every problem better. I do feel terrible, the fact that I'm just sitting here eating sticky rice and custard and they're fixing my bike. I'm gonna take this as a very thankful opportunity and a learning experience. So my bike broke down right here. And here are the mechanic people, the people that took me in. So I think it just shows like things do happen for a reason, you know, like you just gotta take it, look at the positive side of it. I didn't expect this to happen, you know, had some uh, had some other things planned for this video, but I've got to return my bike as soon as this gets done because I'm getting close to my 24 hour period. Uh, thank goodness for these people though.
and we are good to go, ready to ride. I gotta ride fast to beat the 24 hour time period I've gotta return it by, so I'll meet y'all after I return this. All right, we made it back to the Airbnb. Y'all had like 30 minutes left before I had to have the bike back, so I made it back with plenty of time, but for me, it's afternoon now. Enjoyed the market. My goal and plan was to also take y'all around this like 28 kilometer little tour around all the mountains here in Vong Vieng, but you know, it broke down. That took a couple hours. Unfortunate, but it is what it is. Still got a lot of good things. Got to see the market this morning. Got to travel a little bit, but you know what? Breaking down, things happen how they're not supposed to. That's part of life. We learn from them and we'll make sure to improve and do better on the next video. Y'all, some Max My Kind of Beats. Catch you at the next video.